Good morning everyone, I'm Annie and today I am doing a mid-year book tag. I've seen a whole bunch of people doing this recently and it just looks like so much fun and I love watching videos like this because you get so many like amazing recommendations and seeing like what's on people's vibe list at the moment and what's on people's radar and I always end up like buying so many books after videos like this and I just thought it would be really fun because like my reading year, I'm looking at it here, has been like kind of all over the place and there's like a few little bits where it's like okay this is like very much like what I'm feeling right now which spoiler is Greek mythology I think that's been pretty obvious with the last few videos that I've been doing but I thought it'd be really fun to do one of these and so yeah there are a couple of questions in this there's not really too many um for each of them I have picked two books and then the last one I have picked three so let's just get into it I'm too excited <laughs> So the first question is, what is the best book of 2023 so far? Now, like I said, I've picked two for basically all of these questions. So I have Icebreaker by Hannah Grace and From Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. Zapata, Zapata, I don't quite know how to say it. Very sorry if that is wrong, but I picked these two and they're very, very similar. They're both ice skating girlies who have an issue with their competitions and bits and pieces. They're actually both pair skaters, which is really interesting. And these were two books that were actually compared against each other for quite a while and it was very much like I saw this one online and people were like this is great but like if you loved this you'll love this more. Controversial opinion, I don't really feel like they're comparable because in this one we have Anastasia who ends up with Nate who is a hockey player and in this one we have Jasmine who ends up with Ivan and they are both figure skaters. Now I guess they're kind of comparable in a way of they're both like figure skating, you know, they're both, both the girls are pair skaters and both the boys help with their pair skating. But in all honesty, like I kind of feel like that's where it ends. I mean, there's a little bit of enemies to lovers, but I feel the dynamic in it is like so vastly different. So Anastasia and Nate end up together quite sort of early on in the book. I say early on, it's probably about sort of like 50%-ish. Um, and then in this one, Jasmine and Ivan don't end up together until like right at the very end like they don't like admit that they kind of like each other until like right at the very end which is very very satisfying this one is very much slow burn this one is a little bit faster paced this one they're in university university of california at maple hill so this one they are younger in their age and this one they're slightly older i think she's about sort of 18 19 in this Maybe a little bit older because she drinks. I'm pretty sure she drinks. I can't remember. This one, um, Jasmine is 26 and Ivan is about 30. It's slightly different in that regard. I really loved both of them. And like I said, I just don't really think they're comparable. They were my top books of their respective months. This one was more spicy because there was just like more of it. And this one was definitely more slow burn because they don't end up together until like basically right at the end. So the next question is, what new releases have you not read yet? And these are the two that I have pulled off my shelf. So we have Atalanta by Jennifer Saint and What Lurks Between the Fates by Harper L. Woods. Now these are like very different vibes. So this is a standalone and then this is book three in a series and I think the fourth one is due out next year. Why have I not read these yet? So I'm kind of waiting for book club to read this one but some of the other guys they don't want it in the hard bag which is fair enough. So they want to wait for it to come out in paperback which I totally understand but I'm really really excited to read this so I may end up reading this and then doing a reread with my book club guys. Um, and then this one I bought book one, loved book one bought book two and three together and really hated book two. So I rated book one five stars because I really, really loved it. I rated book two two stars because I really, really did not like it. There was like very little plot. It very much felt very fillery, very fluffy um, to the point where I was like actually so desensitized to the spice because it felt like it was like every five pages. I don't really have a good thing to say about that one, but I do have this because I bought it at the same time as book two. Um, and I've heard some good things about it because we kind of get to the next sort of like point in the story where she's like actually going into the Fey realm and bits and pieces. So it's like, okay, it actually like kind of starts to pick up again rather than like basically the entirety of book two was just like, book two very much had book two syndrome and it was very much just like, we get from point A to point B 
and I, I've got to make it last like a couple hundred pages and I was like I'm so bored of this even just like reading the blurb there's more on the line with this and so I hope this one is going to be better otherwise I will be very very disappointed and I will be throwing out the series um and then Atalanta is another one from Jennifer Sane I've read Ariadne and Electra with book club and then we've got this one which is the next in the set um, so Atalanta went on with Jason and the Argonauts and she was like a little side character in one of the other books I have in this list which kind of makes me love her a little bit more because I don't I don't really know a lot about the story of Atalanta and I feel like I kind of got like a few little like sneak peeks as to a few bits with one of the other stories I'm really really excited to read this I'm literally more excited to read this after reading something else than I was before but I do really like the way that Jennifer Singh writes but if you're not into sort of like that prosy like it gives very much like Greek mythology vibes in the way that it's written if you're not into that then you won't like this but the covers oh the covers are just so gorgeous with Jennifer Saint's books I'm literally loving them they're so amazing so the next question is best debut slash new to you author now this one is definitely a debut and I can't remember if this is a debut but she's definitely new to me so we'll start with Set On You by Amy Lee. We follow um, our fitness influencer, Crystal Chen, and her love story with Scott Ritchie, who's a firefighter. I really, really loved this. And even though it was a contemporary romance, I actually really loved the fact that we got so much of like her life on Instagram and how the, the social media kind of affects her every day, how it affects her in the way that she sees herself sees other people, sees situations and bits and pieces and how she deals with backlash when backlash comes. And I thought that was really interesting. And I definitely felt like this had a more powerful message than just, you know, the love story. Although I did really love the love story. It wasn't like super, super spicy, but there was a fair bit. There was a little bit in here and it was quite nice. But yeah, I rated this one five stars as well. I really, really did enjoy this. This was a really interesting read. For me, I, I don't go into the gym. I'm not a gym girly, I'm not a fitness girly by any stretch of the imagination. So I kind of joked around with my husband a little bit and I was like, this is basically a fantasy because like so much of it is set in a gym. <laughs> I did really think this was powerful and I felt like it had a bigger message than just the romance. But even if you just take it as surface level romance, like it still was a really great romance. I did love their relationship. I loved how everything built up and how all these other external factors then fed into their reaction and their their relationship together. So I did really, really love this. And then we have Psyche and Eros, which is a debut from Luna McNamara. Now I've already heard that she's writing another book, which I'm so excited for and you can bet that I'm gonna be picking that up as soon as possible. But I really did enjoy this. And this is the one where I said that we meet Atalanta as a side character and it just like made me love her so much more. And I'm so excited to read Jennifer Saint's version of her story. But this was really, really sweet. I did really enjoy this. I was kind of expecting it a little bit to have like Greek tragedy vibes. And there was like at one point where I was like, oh my God, like it's all going downhill. Like this is so bad. But we do get happy ever after, which was like really, really nice and satisfying. Every single part of this I did really enjoy. I wouldn't say I was like a thousand percent obsessed with it. It was just like, I did really love it, but it was like, it was like a nice, easy read. It's a tiny bit prosy at times. Like some of the things are a little bit kind of like fluffier than, than some other ways of writing. But I did really enjoy this. It felt like it was really rooted within the mythology whilst also taking its own twist on things. So I did really enjoy that. Overall, it was just like a really great book. There's nothing that I can sort of like pick out that was like super duper amazing or like super duper bad. I'm like, it was just like very nice and like kind of even. I didn't get like all of this like emotion going up and down. It was just like very nice and even, but this was really, really enjoyable for me and I rated this four stars. So the next question is what books made you happy? And of course The Lightning Thief had to be on here. I've reread this, I don't know how many times. I reread it again at the beginning of this year, which I did talk about in my January reading wrap up. However, this this just will eternally make me happy like percy was one of my first book boyfriends i will forever hold a special place for him in my heart like i just i'm obsessed it just gives me so many good vibes i love the way that rick riordan writes it's just like so cozy so comfy and like when i'm reading rick riordan stuff now it's like i feel like i need to be like wrapped up in a blanket unless it's like 20 odd degrees outside like it is right now i am literally dying from heat but I feel like I need to be like wrapped up in a blanket with a cup of tea 
and a candle and it's just like so cozy and so comforting and it just like takes me back to when I was like a literal child reading these for the first time and it's just like so many good feelings and like this will forever make me happy if I'm ever having like a bad day and I really desperately need to read something that will like perk me up like it's a hundred percent gonna be Percy Jackson. <laughs> And then the other book we have for what made me happy was Final Offer by Lauren Asher. Now this was one where I had a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. And when I say a little bit, I mean a lot of an emotional roller coaster. But I really did enjoy this. This was Callahan and Alana's story. This was the resolution or the kind of wrap up of the Dream Man Billionaires series, which we're then gonna go into. I think it's the Lakefront Billionaires is her next series, which kind of kind of carries on from what I can gather because. I think it's on the same lake that this house is on so I mean I can't really remember I read this in like literally under 24 hours it arrived in the post I started reading it literally the second it dropped through the front door and then I was done within 24 hours of that point and I still slept overnight and it's not it's not a tiny book 576 577 pages so I literally stormed through this. It just, the whole, the whole series, I really do like the whole series. I thought this was such a nice wrap up to it. It just like really gave so much. I love the way that we sort of see Cal like deal with some things that he's like been, been trying to fight for years and hasn't really been successful. And he does that because he's just so obsessed with Lana and like he just really, really wants to be with her and build that life together. And like they both make mistakes. Cal definitely makes more mistakes than Lana, but like they both have things that they're like, that was definitely a mistake. Like I shouldn't have done that. But I just love the fact that it just like resolves itself so nicely. <laughs> and this is another like comfort read. The Dream Land Billionaire series will now become a comfort read series for me. And it's just so well done. I really enjoyed the whole series. And it just like, I think about this book and I just like start smiling. I'm like, yes, it's so good. <laughs> Books that made me cry. Now we've literally already seen me cry by reading The Spanish Love Deception. I did this in a vlog. I think it was May that I was reading this as part of a vlog. And honestly, I ugly cried more than once literally for no reason like nothing sad actually happens I think it's just kind of the way that it's written and it's just like so emotional and the way that everything just gets kind of like dealt with and unpacked and then like repacked temporarily and the way that she has to deal with all of her own emotions when she sees her ex and this that and the other and the way that Aaron is just like there for her but also like there's kind of that disconnect at the beginning but like you can sort of like tell like he's kind of trying and it's just like it's so good in that respect and what made me cry was basically just like emotional overload rather than anything like actually sad happening but this was a really really good book it's so summer vibes it's like this is the kind of book that you take when you're going away on holiday it was so so amazing again I like I don't think there's like a particular scene that I'm like that made me cry it was just like overall emotional overload that made me cry but this was a really really good one <laughs> And then the other one that made me cry was The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Ashiro. I mean, what didn't I cry about while reading this realistically? Uh, there wasn't that many tears that I think were on the vlog where I was reading this. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this one because I did do like a whole video on this. There weren't too many tears on camera, but honestly, Sally Jackson like got me at one point. It was like nine o'clock at night. Sally Jackson comes on, she's like trying to make me cry. She definitely succeeded. I I just sat there and I was like, this is, this is just too much. And again, I think it was mild nostalgia vibes whilst also being a little bit of like emotional overload. And the fact that Sally's just kind of there and she's like, oh, okay, like you lot are here, like more demigods. Yeah, just come in, it's fine. Like I'll pack you off with some blue cookies. Cause like I can't make any cookies that aren't blue anymore. And it was just like, the vibes from like the first set of Percy Jackson books where he's like, I'll only eat things that are blue. And it's just like, oh, it's so many vibes. And it was such a good time. And again, I think it was like mild emotional overload. There were quite a few moments in it where that was like really sad, like especially this like really dark section here where we kind of like 
have a bit of a recap as to Nico's last trip through Tartarus and everything that that brought with it and like how he then feels afterwards and that made me cry and then like the way that the way that Will Solace then like comes into the underworld with him and then it's like obviously because he's a child of Apollo so it reacts like very strongly to him because he's a child of light and he's now in the underworld where there is no sunlight and how his like body literally reacts to the situation that they're in and how like none of his powers like work quite the same but then he's like do you know what actually like I accept this and it, the way that their relationship changes through the people that they meet and the situations that they're in is just so beautiful and it's like kind of one of those things that it's like you kind of have to like really experience it I think to like fully get it I'm getting emotional just like thinking about it because it was like so good and again it wasn't like a like anything like super super sad happened there was like reference of a couple of things that were kind of sad from other series and I was like oh I forgot that happened and I really did not need reminding at 10 o'clock at night when I should be like going to sleep and not starting another chapter but thank you <laughs> but yeah again like I said I think it was like more emotional overload but I definitely definitely cried <laughs> All right, so what were the prettiest books that I've bought thus far? Now I have just recently done a video on pretty books. So you should definitely go and check these out. But since that video, I have bought these and these are absolutely gorgeous. So we've got Ithaca by Claire North, which is all about Penelope, who is the wife of Odysseus. Um, I even got a little, little bookmark with this, which I thought was really, really cute. Um, and I really love, obviously, this gold circle. As you guys know, if it's got, like, gold gilding, shiny stuff on it, I'm there 100%. But I do really like this, like, it's very Grecian art. I'm loving it. Obviously, we've got this little Greek motif on the top and the bottom. But also these threads. So if you don't know the story of um, Penelope and Odysseus and his whole travels and bits and pieces... Basically, she spends the whole 10 years of the Trojan War at home waiting for him to come home. And then Odysseus ends up going on basically like, I call it a lad's trip because he was like, oh, it's okay. We just like, and he doesn't really say like, oh, we don't need to go home just yet. There's like stuff that like keeps him busy, but I always call it a lad's trip because it just really feels like that when you read it. So he goes on this like another 10 years of a lad's trip, leaves her at home with their son. And she ends up with all of these suitors in her house, like trying to marry her. And she keeps saying like, oh, I can't marry, because she's convinced that Odysseus is still alive and out there somewhere, but obviously they're all like, well, the Trojan War ended and he's not come home, so he's probably dead, like, we'll just marry you. And she's like, no, I can't marry any of you until I've finished this tapestry that I'm creating on her loom. I can't remember if it's like a tapestry or something, it's something like that. So I feel like these threads like very much give that kind of vibe as to like she's like oh like I've got stuff like I actually need to do like I can't marry you until I finish this task and the whole thing is is like every night she goes and unpicks a bunch of it and she like does it really really slowly through the day and they're like oh my god hurry up woman and like she spends years trying to make this tapestry but every night she's going and she's unpicking it so that she buys herself a little bit more time I think eventually she does get found out. I don't know what it is in this story, but I know in like the original, she gets found out in bits and pieces, but I'm really excited because we also get a book two, which is called House of Odysseus. And I don't know anything about that one yet because it's actually not even out. And that's one I'm really excited to read, which kind of leads on to the next question, but I haven't put it in as the next question because I can't remember when it's coming out, but I'm really excited to read that one. I don't really have anything else to say. It's a pretty cover. And then guess what? This book is entirely gold. So of course it was going to end up on this list. And this is Clytemnestra by Costanza Cassati. Again, sorry if that's wrong. I'm really not great with pronouncing names. Even when I'm reading names, I end up saying them wrong for most of it. But this is entirely gold. It was entirely beautiful. We've got all these like beautiful flowers. And again, this Greek motif around the edge. And this was, I really love Clytemnestra as a character and she's very controversial and whatever book I read her in I'm always like her that's my girl because basically the whole thing is is her daughter so her daughter gets murdered so that the Greeks have a fair wind to get to Troy and she basically goes all right husband wait till you come home I'm gonna have you and she ends up killing her husband and that's like a little bit of a spoiler but everyone's written about this story now and it's just kind of a vibe and I know that she's like a bad person but you know when like the villain is your favorite person in the story this is literally her and I've read so many stories with her in them I like have read the original Greek tragedies 
you know, I've obviously read Electra from Jennifer Saint, Psyche and Eros has mention of her as well. And I think that's another one that I've read recently where she's mentioned and I'm just like, that's my girl. Like she's there, she's still a boss lady, regardless of what story you put her in. You can portray her as the villain as all you like, but I'm still going to love her eternally. And I'm so excited to read this story. I just, I just think that she's such a strong woman in a society that was like not designed for strong women and she's just a vibe. She was so far ahead of her time as a character, as a person and I'm 100% here for it and of course the whole thing is like entirely gold so of course I'm gonna love the cover. And then the last question is books that I need to read before the end of the year. Now I have picked three books that aren't actually out yet because they're ones that I know that I am going to get as soon as they're out and I'm going to read them like basically straight away. So first up we have Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. This comes out in November and this is a kind of following on from the Dreamland Billionaires. It's the Lakefront Billionaires I believe if I'm right. It is this gorgeous purple cover. I am obsessed. I can't wait to have it on my shelf. It's gonna look so amazing. And I'm really excited because I love the way that Lauren Asher writes. I love the Dreamland Billionaire series and I just have really good vibes going into this. I haven't really read the blurb. I kind of don't really care what the blurb says. I'm gonna buy the book and I'm gonna read it regardless. <laughs> Then we have Wildfire by Hannah Grace. Now this is continuing on from Icebreaker. This kind of carries on with the friendship group. I think it is Anastasia's friend that we follow. I can't remember her name. I think it's Anastasia's friend that we follow. And I'm really, really excited for that. It is this beautiful pink cover and it's gonna look great on my shelf. Again, I'm really loving these contemporary romances that have these like beautiful, bright, bold colors. <laughs> my shelf looks, so I'm literally looking at it. My shelf is so colorful. I'm 100% here for it. I'm loving it. It's great. And then lastly, we have Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Mayer. I, again, I don't know if that's how you say your name. I'm very sorry if it's not. She is a TikTok girly. When I had TikTok, I have currently deleted TikTok because mental health. But when I was on TikTok, I was seeing her book all over the place. She's a really funny TikToker. I think the book kind of started out as like a little TikTok mini series where she was like, point of view you're the villain's assistant and it was like this like grumpy sunshine vibes and I remember like following a bunch of the videos and I was like 100% obsessed and then I heard she was going to be turning it into a book and this comes out in September and I'm like I need this like now please and thank you I'm excited again I'm not going to read the blurb I don't really care what the blurb says I saw the TikTok series I was obsessed with it I don't have TikTok anymore so I don't know if that's still going it probably is but I'm really excited for it. I'm really excited to see everything about this. It's her debut. I'm, yeah, I'm just really here for it and I'm so excited. <laughs> so there we have it. That was my mid-year book tag. I feel like that was a lot of talking. It was a lot of vibes, but I'm 100% here for all of these books, ones that I have read, the ones that I have yet to read, the ones that are yet to come out. And I'm really, really excited for the second half of the year. I think it's gonna be a really, really good reading year. I am currently ahead of my goal for what I want to read this year, which is really where where I want to be. I always set my goal at 52 for the year, so it's one a week, because some weeks I don't really get to read very much, and then some weeks I get to read more. So I feel like that's like a really good thing for me. I've done the same number for the last few years, and it's just worked great, and I've been able to go over that the last two years. So we're looking on track to be going over that goal. If you took any recommendations away from today, let me know down in the comments. And if there's anything that you think that I need to pick up that should have been on this list, let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>